Hello everyone. Today we're going to be picking the Abloy Profile Lock, but before we do that, I want to give a bit of an introduction to the ingeniousness of this lock. The Abloy Profile is the first of its kind, the Profiled Disk Tumbler Lock. It was made by a company called Abloy, which was founded in 1907 by Emil Henriksson. Abloy grew quickly to becoming the most notable high security lock brand in the world. They released their Abloy Classic in 1918, and it shook the waters of the world by just its incredible mechanics and the simplicity of the whole design. Firstly, let's just go ahead and go through this from an economic standpoint. It's a really cheap lock to produce. The fact that it doesn't require any springs, the discs are just, you know, stamped out. They don't have to be turned like the pins and they don't really even have to be very accurate. The shell of it is also very easy to make and the sidebar is literally just a piece of wire. So the Ablo Classic was really cheap to produce, but it was exceptionally good in withstanding the harsh weather of Finland. Finland, if you are from Finland, you probably know, gets very cold and sometimes very hot. Uh, it's a, a lot of people use the Abloy Classic locks uh, to secure boats and marine equipment. And they even use Abloy uh, locks now in the Indian Railway uh, system, which, you know, the coal power trains, yeah, they can get a little bit sooty. So, the Abloy Classic was just unbeatable when it came to versatility. But the third, and from my perspective, most impressive thing about it was the incredible pick resistance that the Abloy Classic gave. The half moon shape, when closed up on each other, makes it really difficult to access it with any type of tool. And it wasn't actually until about 70 years later that the Abloy Classic was officially picked. But the demand for high security locks actually kept on growing as more high security locks became available. Uh, and that is how the Abloy Profile lock came about. It was very similar to the Abloy Classic, except that it was a little bit bigger, but featured a profiled keyway. And it was the first discipline lock of its kind to feature a profile, uh, profile keyway. It typically has a profile in the start plate or the spinner and the last plate. And the one in the last plate tends to be a little bit more restrictive. This one I have in front of me is one particularly more restricted. We'll take a look at it more in the gutting. Uh, but the it's called the Abloy High Profile. And this type of lock here is sometimes often seen on military installations. So I have a, I'm a bit of a collector, I guess you could say. So I have a vast array of these Abloy Profile locks. They're my favorite type of lock, actually. And I scanned the keyways of a notable pool of them, uh, a lot, a lot, a lot. Some of them more great towards the consumer market and some of them that were pretty difficult to get as they are mostly seen in military installations. And I did a scanning of them and then I took them into my CAD software and then I laid them all on top of each other and I traced out the optimal size for the tool, which is what I have in front of me here. Here is the tool and it's the, I call it the uh, universal Abloy profile pick because it can basically pick all of these. There are, I, I don't know if there is one that it doesn't work on uh, as of yet. So yeah, let's go ahead and pick this lock here. I have not picked this one here before, uh, so it'll be interesting to see if I can get it open. <laughs> Now that they are all rotated forward, I typically like to use a little bit more on a heavier side of tension with this type of lock, but the a little bit more annoying part about this, these types of lock is that they're so restricted that you can't actually have that much meat in the tensioner. So you do have to be careful when, when picking these uh, types of locks here. That's um, too much tension and you might end up damaging your tool. <laughs> first one is the spinner. This can be set in either the zero position or all the way forward 90 degrees. 
it actually has a gate on both sides, but it does need to be set. Second disk is the first type of key disk. And this type of, uh, in this position where I am at, where I'm trying to get the lock into any type of false set, I'm just going to rotate it into an area where it doesn't stick too much. You can sort of feel it grinding along the sidebar if you have tension and you're moving the disk. So just try and find an area where it doesn't grind and put it in there. All right, here we go. Uh, I'm not in a full set as of yet, so I'm just going to go back and forth trying to find where it is supposed to be. You need to concentrate a little bit. Sometimes you might actually knock the spinner out of place um, as it is the most restricted part of the lock. So it might sometimes be a good idea to go forward and reset the spinner into its correct position. I think we're getting close to being in a full set here now. <laughs> I was at the last one, it was rotated in the first gate, so I moved it back a touch. There I could rotate it freely, moved it back one more, and it could barely rotate it, so I think it's in the middle one. Right now I'm just concentrating a little bit and going through all of the discs, moving them into a position, checking if it feels different from the one they're in, and then moving it back if it does. And there we go, the lock is open. As you can see, we are now moving the tailpiece. I assume that some of you are probably interested in seeing the guts of this lock. So oh, let's go in and do that. Okay. Uh, let's go in and get this uh, out. Gonna put that right here. Hopefully these hex keys fit, they do not. That means that this is an M3 set screw. Um, I should have a hex key for that. All right, I actually had to go all the way outside to the garage to find a hex key set. So now we can go ahead and get this thing. That is not the right one. This one is the right one. Set screw out. Hopefully the back side of this doesn't explode. Marvelous. I can just go like this. We at least are keeping the order. You can see the sidebar that's inside of there. I don't know if I can get that out. I'll try in a moment. These came out like so. So 
guess this side here would be down to the table, which would be upwards in relation to the key. So a little bit of a uh, interesting pop quiz. Why do you think they have that little cutout right there? Right there. Why, why is that little cutout right there? Well, actually, the early designs of a tool to pick these abloys uh, revolved around a sort of L-shaped tool that went down inside of these discs, I'll show in a moment with the hex key, and created some sort of torsion. But a weakness that they had uh, was that if you removed that part of the disc, they could no longer function, those kind of tools. So let me just go ahead and show you a little bit. Uh, what the tool would sort of do is that it will be sort of an L like this. It will go down inside of the discs and then you could rotate it, rotate the disc like so. Obviously, you cannot do that if the middle portion of the disc, which it pivots against, is removed. Here is the cam assembly. This is where the, all of the discs lie, and this is the sidebar, which we were talking about in the beginning of the video. Here is the little spring actuator all the way at the bottom. And that is the abloy profile picked. I want to show you a little bit more with the tool. As you can see the bottom here of the tool, let me show you. There we go. As we can see the bottom here of the tool has a, a lot cut out from the tensioner because the tensioner needs to be able to fit down inside of that disc right here and this disc right here, which it is able to do. Some discs, though typically more on the bottom, have a cutout uh, in the top of the bow. That makes it important that we try and remove them as much of the bow as possible, which we are doing. So, yeah. That is basically it. Thank you a lot for watching the video. I will now begin to put this lock back together.